to break it all down for us is Steve Moore from the Committee to Unleash Prosperity, Hotline, and FreedomWorks Vice President, and Steve Forbes, Forbes Media Chairman and Editor-in-Chief. The two Steves, good to see you both. Uh, Steve Forbes, first of all, i got to make a slight correction. That graph that we saw with the dotted line, the dotted line, the inflation really took off right after Joe Biden was elected because everybody knew about his war on energy. He telegraphed that throughout the campaign, and, and once he was elected, the very week he was elected, we saw the beginning of the spike in oil and gas prices. So not only did it happen, yeah, you see that dotted line, it says January 2021. It should say November 2020. That's where that line really is. So we knew this was going to happen way back then, right? Uh, that's right. There are two kinds of inflation, David. One is monetary, where you print too much money, lower the value of the dollar. And the other is non-monetary, which is what they're doing now. And that is un artificially raising prices through crazy things like a war on fossil fuels. Since Biden took office, he's issued 77 executive orders. Regulations have been calculated to cost the economy last year over $200 billion. As you know, regulation is another form of taxation. So instead of letting the yeah. economy heal, from those COVID lockdowns, and we're about to get a hit because of the war in Ukraine. Instead of letting the economy deal with it, Biden is making it worse. Then you have the Federal Reserve doing its part, printing up a lot of money, right. which is going to hit the economy later this year, next year. So we've got some rough waters ahead. Well, Steve Moore, you know who knows exactly what Steve Forbes was just saying? is a Democrat, Senator Joe Manchin, none other than. Let me just read something he said this morning when the figures came out. He said, let me be clear. Inflation is a tax, and today's historic inflation data tells another chilling story about how these taxes on Americans are completely out of control. Here is the truth. We cannot spend our way to a balanced, healthy economy and continue adding to our $30 trillion national debt. Getting inflation under control will require more aggressive action by a Federal Reserve that waited far too long to act. It demands the administration mm -hmm. and Congress, Democrats and Republicans alike, support an all-of-the-above energy mm. policy because that is the only way to bring down the high price of gas and energy while attacking climate change. I don't think you could have said that better yourself. No offense, Steve. <laughs> I was, was going to say, <laughs> I don't think I can. That's the reason, by the way, David, that Joe Manchin is my favorite Democrat because he, he puts it very well. Obviously, he's from West Virginia, which is a big coal and uh, an energy state, but he is precisely right. And one thing that Steve Forbes said, he's exactly right about all these executive orders regulating the economy. I just want to point out, uh, gentlemen, that actually Trump came in with a lot of executive orders doing exactly the opposite of deregulating the economy Bingo. and getting getting the government off of the back of the businesses. Um, one other quick point, David. I am really kind of tired of, of, of the Biden administration saying they, they're doing everything they can to lower gas prices. No, they're not. This was... This was a uh, plan intentionally to make oil and gas more expensive yes. because they don't like oil and gas. Well, they and don't they want people to that. use it. He meant Biden yeah. mentioned that throughout the campaign. By the way, exactly. before I go back to Steve Forbes, I want to mention yeah. uh, the president is in Iowa. We're going to be going. He's at an ethanol plant, by the way. And uh, mm -hmm. there's a big announcement about how he's going to allow mm -hmm. gas stations to use ethanol throughout the summer, which, by the way, causes smog for all the environmentalists out there in the audience. So but the point is, Steve Forbes, that not only are, are they at attacking Republicans uh, for what's going on. They're, they're attacking uh, Democrats as well. And I mean, I'm, I'm just waiting for them to attack Joe Manchin for, for those comments that he made. In fact, Jesse Lee, uh, who is an advisor at FLAC at the National Economic Council, a uh, place that, that Larry Kudlow used to work at, came out with a tweet. I want to put that up on the screen. He said, Putin and Senator Rick Scott, who basically said the same thing that Joe Manchin just said, are fully in lockstop, lockstep, blaming Biden for Putin's price hike. So surprising. So, so they're they're calling this. They're calling Senator Scott and probably Joe Manchin uh, a Putin sympathizer. I mean, it's extraordinary the links to which they're going. And this is why Joe Biden is undermining his own presidency with nonsense like that. Everyone knows that the prices were rising before Putin invaded Ukraine, and by being so blatantly untrue, so blatantly lying. Uh, people lose trust in him and other things that he does. 
So it's not just about the economic costs of what he's doing. People don't feel he's a trustworthy chief executive, and the Democrats are going to suffer for that in November. But, you know, the nastiness, Steve Moore, I know we're, we're not unaccustomed to nastiness inside the Beltway, but, uh, you know, to call Senator Rick Scott a, a Putin sympathizer, and basically they're saying the same thing about what Joe Manchin just said, it, it, it's, it's really, they don't seem to be at all concerned about keeping their coalition together. And it's hypocritical, too. I mean, I've said this, I said this before the election, that if Biden won, the two biggest winners on the planet would be Vladimir Putin and President Xi of China. And that's exactly yeah. the way it's turned out, where, you know, the reduction in American energy. David, who do you think has been the biggest winner of that? Obviously, uh, you, you know, uh, Putin, whose whole ex, uh, you know, whose whole economy is based on oil and gas. And incidentally, one other quick thing, David, you know, you played that clip where the uh, the White House was saying, well, this is because, you know, there's so much more demand. Just a couple of months ago, they said this is because of supply chain problems. That's I mean, right. which is it? Is it demand supply? That's right. I mean, the fact is we're just not producing enough goods and services. And I guarantee you one thing, a $2.5 trillion tax increase would not make the supply of goods and services any higher. I learned that from Steve Forbes. Yeah, well, Steve <laughs> Forbes, you know, as if that wasn't trouble enough for this administration in Afghanistan and what's happening in Ukraine and everything, we also have a reemergence of COVID uh, at the risk of being cut off, and we may have to just jump right back to what's going on in Iowa. But I want to run a soundbite of, of something that Governor DeSantis just said about the return to mandates because of an uptick in COVID cases. Of course, it hit hard inside the Beltway. But let me just play that. Run this DeSantis clip, if you can, please. As long as I sit in the chair in which I sit, no Floridian will be restricted, mandated, or locked down in any possible way. Now, Steve Forbes, the White House might not like that attitude and that sentiment, but I think most Americans do right now, don't you? Oh, absolutely. And it's amazing how the Democrats, especially what you see unfolding in Philadelphia, ignore the science and go to this voodoo thing that if we make people wear masks, somehow that makes COVID go away. Even Dr. Fauci now acknowledged that this, <laughs> this is going to be with us one way or the other. And now Biden administration is compounding this felony by ha trying to get uh, the courts to allow them to require federal employees to have vaccines and ignore natural immunity. Yes. The science says natural immunity is almost three times more effective than the shots, yet they don't acknowledge that. And nor do they acknowledge the economic effects, as Steve Moore, our scholar Steve Moore has, in a, in a great new study that they put out, your group put out, Steve Moore, uh, but showing how effective the economies of those states that didn't do the lockdowns, that didn't have all the mandates, that yep. didn't, by the way, have a huge spike as a result of that in COVID. So, uh, by the way, we're seeing, I believe that's Kamala Harris. Uh, yeah, let's, let's listen. We're, gentlemen, if you can stay with us, because they're going to be talking a lot about inflation here. Well, thank you so we'll get much your comments here. after. So but here's the ahead. Vice President of the United States, Great Kamala Harris. Harris. An honor oh, to no, have it's not. the President of the United Sorry. States of America here with us today. I'm so thankful that he's here. And it's wonderful to be back here at Poet Bioprocessing and to meet with the people who have been working so hard, folks I've met over the last several back. years. All right, that, that obviously is not Kamala Harris. Forgive me, audience, for making that mistake. Uh, she looked like uh, Kamala Harris from a distance. Uh, but Steve Moore, what, once, we, once we jump back and get the president uh, in, I'll, I'll ask you to stop. But the bottom line is you've shown the economic effects of the lockdowns just were horrendous, whereas those states like yeah. Florida that didn't buy into them did pretty well. That's exactly right. In Florida, you just saw that clip from Ron DeSantis. Florida did not shut down its economy. I like to do the comparison, David, of Florida and California, where California really shut down just about everything, their businesses, their schools, their churches, their restaurants. And uh, it's a really interesting. Florida and, and, uh, and uh, California had roughly the same death rate. Uh, so it, it shows that the lockdowns had no imp impact on the health. But what the lockdowns did, David, was they destroyed these state economies of states like Illinois, California. You're there in New York, New Jersey. Those states suffered the biggest losses, which are continuing to this right. day. And I'm just pained to see 
that you would think that these governors would have learned the lessons, but apparently uh, the governor of Pennsylvania, Wolf, hasn't learned it because they want to reestablish new regulations. But why are they shooting themselves in the foot, Steve Forbes? I mean, you live in New Jersey. You're you're a part of uh, that great state, and and the the governor who just won by a sliver, he came very close. To, to having uh, the same result that they had in Virginia, being voted out of office. Why is he going down this route? By the way, we're just getting information. This is, this is Congresswoman Cindy Axney she, from the state of Iowa. Uh, she's going to be introducing the president. But go ahead, Steve Forbes. What's happening in Jersey? Uh, well, it's a great state with not so great uh, governance, uh, yeah. starting with the governor and the state legislature. And they have, I think it's all about control, David. Any yes. excuse they have to be yes. able to control our lives, tell us what to do, it's almost a Pavlovian response. You know, <laughs> it goes back to our, our former mayor of New York who wanted to restrict the size of bottles of soda right. and, uh, and, and junky things like that. So instead of leaving us alone and letting the, these, these things work themselves out, as they did in Florida, right. uh, they want to feel that they are anything good that happens, they want to make it happen or take credit for it. Instead, in that, more, in that uh, survey that Steve Moore and two others did, New Jersey is about the worst state in the yep. union in terms of impact on the economy, education. And look at the huge cost to children and families yeah. and depression and suicides. Uh, what they're doing is criminal.